And my statement when I did that interview was this, that it's not yet time. The last word has not been spoken on these elections. So do not threaten people and further alienate even those who were on your side from the beginning. That's the message. An issued certificate of return. It is only that candidate that has scored the uh, highest number of votes and at least 25% in uh, each in at least two third percent to two third of the states of the federation and the federal capital territory right. remember so, i thought you were going to say something different from what i each, was going to no, no, no. which part or what part of senator dati ahmed's statement was unbecoming uh, uh, okay nearly the totality listen the interviewer asked him several times he said what will you do if the Supreme Court judgment is against you, if the interpretation which you are offering about the constitutional aspect of this election, if it is against that of the Supreme Court and they find against you. And he kept saying, no, it's not even open to analysis. The, the word says and, and it's very clear. And the Supreme Court, in its wisdom, had better give this, in other words, his interpretation. I mean, this is, this is trying to dictate to the supreme arbiter of the nation. Whatever you think of the Supreme Court, it is an institution we, we all uh, revert to sooner or later. If not today, then tomorrow. If not about this election, maybe about the next election. But that he kept saying, no, the Supreme Court has got in its wisdom to agree with me. That, kind, that is what is known as fascistic language. It is not acceptable. And for me, it alienates people. It alienates even supporters. I know this for a fact. People come to me, you know how re I relate to young people. I relate to those who have found certain problems with the spokespeople of this particular movement. I'm not interested in the other ones. Everybody knows the other movements. But well, there's a new boy on the, on the block, as the expression stays. And many of us have been waiting for that new kid on the block. And so we have a stake in it. And wherever it seems to be going wrong, we're going to tell the truth to that new kid. And the supporters who also say they have allied thinking with us, that's all. But go and watch that tape all over again. Introduce that tape to any kind of neutral jury, uh, members of whom don't even know anything about the uh, Nigerian situation. Talk about body language, talk about vocal language, talk about the actual text of Dati's pronouncement. This is intimidation and it's not acceptable. I refuse to be part of it. Section 134 stipulates who to be declared an issued certificate of return. It is only that candidate that has scored the uh, highest number of votes and at least 25% in uh, each, in at least two third percent, two, two third of the states of the federation and the federal capital territory. Right. Remember, so, I thought you were each, going to say something different from what I each, was going to. Read. No, no, no. Each <laughs> and now it is very clear. Tinumbu does not have twenty-five percent in the FCT. We denied him. We got sixty-one percent. Atiku does not have twenty-one percent, twenty-five percent in the FCT. We denied both of them by the clear unambiguous provision of the nigerian constitution which must not be breached tinimbo has not satisfied the requirement to be declared president-elect accordingly yeah. there is no president-elect for nigeria now i repeat accordingly there is no president-elect for nigeria at the moment because the declared one 
violates the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And I know what I'm saying. The constitution is there in your presence, it's available, everybody is reading it as I speak. I'm not therefore behaving illegally or unconstitutionally. To the contrary, I am supporting constitutionality. It is in fact better for the powers that be to go and create additional 6% out of thin air and rig it back to Tinubu and therefore swear him in on 25% than to go ahead and take the risk of swearing in a so-called president-elect that has not met the constitutional requirement. Interesting. This conversation, that, I mean, what you there is started a, saying, just okay. for a moment, mm -hmm. was one conversation I had with Mr. Olisa Bakuba yes. a few months ago when yes. he was one of those who raised it and said, I need to come out to explain to Nigerians this second part of the provision of the section 134 of the constitution but for the benefit of our viewers let me just read quickly yes, thank you. what section 134 says and it says a candidate for an election to the office of the president shall be deemed to have been duly elected where there being only two candidates for the election he has a majority of votes cast at the election that is the first provision then he has not less than one quarter of the votes cast had the election in each of the least two thirds of all the states in the federation and the federal capital territory abuja that is a second uh, provision can i comment go ahead please this document you read is not a puzzle it is in english all levels that you wrote and i wrote and the justices and everybody that is a candidate wrote it is law the law is not a game for politicians to play this document is not available for uh, Yakubu to interpret that day. It is there for him to follow. The English is very clear. These are fundamental provisions of the uh, Constitution. They come already interpreted. You cannot take a gun, shoot somebody, and then ask the family to go and get interpretation that you only fired your weapon and then it killed him no this constitution is more than abundantly clear it says and show you know the meaning of and we know the meaning of and there is no justice beyond what is simplicity simplicity is justice simplicity is wisdom simplicity is knowledge those who have argued differently ended up helping our case because they say that there is a certain ruling which says the FCT is a state. Good. FCT is a state. Where is the each of 25% for FCT? It is not there. Um, I am not a careless, reckless speaker. I am working with the Constitution there, that document right you just read. I'm following it. And I dare to tell you that swearing in Tinimbo and Shetima is as good as swearing in the Nigerian army on 29th of May. If you swear in uh, people that have not satisfied the requirement, you have by so doing ended democracy. The crisis I'm telling you now is that this our democracy is going to end by the way we are going. This democracy is going to end on the 29th of May. 2023 please write it those are extreme, you know my those are extreme thoughts i am uh, very very and my statement when i did that interview was this that it's not yet time the last word has not been spoken on these elections so do not threaten people and further alienate even those who were on your side from the beginning that's the message so when i use the example of donald trump look at him now a common felon who not only wanted to disrupt the entire system to reimpose himself on the people but went further and stormed the capital resulting some deaths so don't use language of incitement which leads to that kind of result and i don't care who doesn't want to hear it i speak the truth People want to, they can listen, they may not listen, but there are precedents all over the world 
from which we can learn. And in this particular case, using the American system, uh, it's normal to use, uh, shall we say, uh, models of events to teach ourselves certain various levels, uh, lessons. And so that's it. You know, when I use, when I summon Donald Trump, it's simply to tell people, you're beginning to behave like Donald Trump. And that's not very good for democracy in this country.